everyone, welcome back to Faye Mead or welcome to Faye Wood Mead. If this is your first time here, hi, thanks for joining us. Today I'll be tasting the hibiscus, tamarind, cinnamon, orange mead. But before I do, I'm gonna tell you all how I made it in a fun montage. I hope that you enjoy this format because I have a few more videos coming out that's gonna be like the exact same thing, so. <laughs> I hope you like it. It's a little different. So if you wanna use tamarind beans, you just remove the shells, remove the weird veiny things on them, and then you steep them in hot water for about 10 minutes. For this recipe, I'm also adding one teaspoon of orange peel as well as an ounce of hibiscus flowers. So I just pour the hot boiling water that I had used to steep the beans over the hibiscus, and I steep those about three to four minutes. After soaking your tamarind beans, you just go ahead and blend them until all of those seeds are dislodged. And then I collected two and a half pounds of orange blossom honey. As you can see, I am struggling to find a good way to filter out this <laughs> tamarind bean paste. But once I do, I've got a nice hot liquid that I can blend my honey in with. Then I fill up that carboy and shake the heck out of it. I'm also adding 2.5 grams of Go Firm Protect as well as 1.09 grams of Opti White. I've got an eighth of a teaspoon of Blanc Soft as well as an eighth of a teaspoon of Wine Tannin. And once that water is at the right temperature, I'm gonna go ahead and add about a half packet of 71B. Once that yeast is steeped for a little bit, you wanna add some sugar to help those little babies get going. I went ahead and used a Tosna calculator to find the correct nutrient additions that I'm going to need for this mead. About a month later, I had assumed that this mead was finished. However, I found that it was not, um, because as it turns out, tamarind is quite acidic. So I waited another month, racked again, because there was, I mean, look at this, it's so beautiful and I went ahead and just stabilized it. I figured it was gonna go as low as it could at this point, which was about 1.016. And at this time, after stabilizing my meat, I went ahead and added my cinnamon stick. And then a couple days later, I added about a third a cup of orange blossom honey, just to sweeten it up a bit, and to make sure that it had in fact stabilized. A few days later, I racked once again and added juice from a half an orange. This brought me up to 1.026 gravity. And for good measure, because this was a bit tart, I added two teaspoons of homemade vanilla extract. All right, here we go. As you can see, this bottle is like the dregs. So there's a couple little floaty things in there. Ooh, very nice, all right. There's a little bit of a hiss that came out after that. Let's pour this. I mean, overall, it's got a nice clarity. This is only 9.7%. It was supposed to be a little bit higher, but it's stalled. Tamarind is a little bit more acidic than I thought. You do get the tamarind and cinnamon on the nose. I need this to just open up a little bit here first. All right, let's see. Mmm. Ooh. Okay. The orange is still a little bit funky. This seems to happen <laughs> where orange needs a little bit of time. I don't know what it is about adding it to alcohol that kind of turns it. I'm sure there's science behind it, but overall, it, like while it's on the palate, it feels very smooth. It's not, it's not overly bitey. And I think I balanced it pretty well uh, between tan and acidity and sweetness. I definitely get the hibiscus as well. The cinnamon is light. I mean, there's so many flavors going on in this. I, I don't know why. I made it quite as complicated uh, or as complex as I did, but you can pick out the hibiscus. It's not super forward. The things that are forward are the tamarind and the cinnamon, which I'm glad that the cinnamon kind of stands out. I, I, I had added the cinnamon because I wanted to pull down the acidity a little bit more and add a little bit more of like an earthiness to it, I think just because everything else is so bright, tart, uh, and then the cinnamon helped kind of pull it back. And I added um, that small amount of vanilla extract, actually. I, I didn't want a vanilla flavor, I just added it for a smoothness, which definitely worked, for sure. That helped smooth that body out. 
a lot. This definitely needs a little bit more aging. I think with a little bit more time, the flavors will be even better than they are. Cause like I said, the orange kind of adds a funk, but once that orange turns into orange and not funky orange, if you know what I mean, this gonna be really good. I think chilled, this would be really nice. Cause there are a lot of flavors. It's very punchy, but I think right now in the heat of the summer, uh, if it's a little bit chilled, maybe put it on ice or something, I don't know. In fact, I can try that right now and throw an ice cube in here and see what that's like. All right, let's see, shall we? Mm-hmm, I was right. <laughs> Although, hang on. No, I wasn't right. It gets rid of the cinnamon, kind of. It's there, but it enhances the bright notes. It decreases the smoothness of the drink, actually. Although, <laughs> I, keep, I keep going back and forth on this thing. Now I've given it a little bit more time, that's pleasant. That's actually really nice. It lightens it up a lot, as you would suspect adding water to your mead, I mean, it's gonna lighten up. Yeah, now it's kind of like a fruit punch. I mean, I could sit outside and drink this. Okay, that works. <laughs> Confirmed. Just give it a second. Don't drink it too soon. You gotta let the ice settle in a little bit, but that's good. Actually, it's good. That works a lot. It works very well. All right, so this mead stalled out um, because the ingredients I added were too acidic. Also, I use well water and my well water is also on the acidic side. So we gotta keep all of that in mind. But if you made this with like purified water, who knows, it might not stall out on you if you've got a nice even 7.0, you know, neutral. Um, now the ingredient that you can add to assist with that is potassium bicarbonate, which I do need to pick up. Um, but it lowers the acidity of whatever the fruit is that you're adding. So that is something that I would change if I were to make this meat again. Other than that, I don't really know uh, what else I would change. I like the combination of ingredients. I might cut out the orange and just focus on hibiscus, tamarind, and cinnamon. It might be really good sparkling. If you uh, force carbonate in a keg, that could be really good. I could see that as being really good. Well, let me know in the comments what you think of this mead, what you think of the video, <laughs> and my, I don't wanna say my new structure. I'm testing it out. Honestly, it's made life a lot easier for me. Uh, I make less mistakes because I don't feel the pressure of being filmed constantly. Uh, Cause unlike some of my fellow brew tubers, I have to take down all my equipment and reset up, you know, I have to like put on my face and there's, and clean. <laughs> there's like a lot of setup preparation. Uh, there's only like certain days a week um, that I can do this cause I'm just filming in my kitchen, you know. And so it was just, it made it a lot easier being able to just like do a quick phone video, just whenever, any time of day, don't have to worry about it. Um, and I didn't have the pressure of like having the camera running and everything else uh, and the mass amount of editing. Oh my God, my editing time is like whew, cut way down uh, as far as like cutting film together, you know, which is great. So let me know, let me know what you think. And check out all my links below. I have memberships, I have Patreon. Your support is so appreciated. Thanks for watching, I appreciate you so much. Mwah. I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.